What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So in today's video I am going to be talking about Manchester United's last game that we went and played Burnley at the 32 Dreams at Old Trafford. So let's just get straight into today's video. So we made two changes from the last game against Liverpool. So talking about the starting eleven, so he started with De Gea, Wan Masaka, Jones, Maguire, Williams, Fred Matic, Mata Pereira James, Martial. Overall reaction, absolutely fucking embarrassing. Disappointing, dreadful, awful, played fucking shite, played like a bunch of amateurs, get this clueless manager out, players weren't good enough, don't have any words to describe it. Now, before I get into this video, I have to have my usual rants. Now, Manchester United Burnley, obviously, good rivalry between two Lancashire sides. I'm disappointed with this team because we've had two wins in the space of like four days against Liverpool and Burnley. Now, Liverpool is okay because we know that Liverpool are tough. We had half a chance. We blew it against them at the end of the day. Liverpool were better on the day. But coming into this one now against Burnley, now, everyone would have been thinking, right, this is the game that we've got to bounce back. This is the game where we've got to win. This is the game where, where the players have got to react and we've got to press the reset button and go again. Now, this game from top to bottom was absolutely dreadful. It was awful out there. That performance was dreadful to watch. It was dreadful to watch. I have to first start off by saying, well done Burnley. You played a fantastic game. You deserve it. You deserve the win. You absolutely smashed it. Well done. Well done on the win. You deserved it. You were the better team on the day. We just were pants. We were shite on the day. We couldn't turn up. We couldn't turn up for a game against Burnley. And you know what? We've been seeing it now for the last couple of years. You know, because Burnley have come to Old Trafford. They've absolutely gave it everything the last few years. The last few years, they've drawn to Manchester United. Last year, we fought back well. We showed spirit, character, fight to get back into that game when we were 2-0 down. This one, we didn't have any fight, passion, pride. No character in this team to get us scoring goals. This game was dreadful. It was dreadful. It was like watching a training session out there. These players are just doodling. Uh, 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 uh. This is Manchester United. How many trophies has Manchester United got? 20 fucking trophies. This is the best team probably in the Premier League. We are the best team in the Premier League. We've won 13 trophies in the Premiership. And this is how we bloody perform against Burnley. Fucking Burnley. I mean, how many players do, do you think of their players coming into un that United side? Think of the quality when they turn up on the day against the likes of Tottenham, Cities and all them lot. How many of their players are going to get into that United squad? Maybe a few, not all of them. But I'm sick and tired of seeing this team going backwards. I'm just going to start off by saying this manager. We have employed a manager that is clueless. He doesn't know what he's doing now. He's a PE teacher. He's a great manager. He's a legend of the club. They're not going to sack him yet because because everyone knows that he's not going to get sacked yet. When he gets sacked, all the Oli Out Brigade are going to be fucking cheering when he's out. But the thing is, the reason why he cannot deal with Manchester United right now is because the job is too big for him at the minute. It's a big team. He's never managed a big team like Manchester United before. And it's too much for him. If it's too much for you, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, all you have to do is, is turn to Edward Wood and the Glazers and say, this is too much for me, I can't deal with the pressure, I'm leaving, I'm off. You can easily say that. And then they'll just rip up your contract, bye-bye, off you go to wherever where you want to go next. Mould, Cardiff, wherever you want to go. This club is going backwards at the minute. We're not improving. Whenever we win a game, these players come out saying, we're improving, we're improving, we're improving. We're not fucking improving. Show me that improvement against Wolves. If we're improving, show me that improvement against Wolves. I am sick and tired of seeing this shit week in, week out against this team. This is probably one of the worst months that we've had. All of last year, we lost one game in the Premier League. This month, we've lost three games in the Premier League. Arsenal, Liverpool, Burnley. We should be beating teams like Burnley. This is the second time we've been beaten at home this season. This time against Burnley. First one was against Crystal Palace. Now Burnley. It's just going backwards for us. The manager is to blame for this one because massively. It's massively down on this manager because he's clueless. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's a PE teacher. He's a Sunday league coach. 
he doesn't know what he's doing at this club at the minute. If he wants to succeed at this club, he has got to get his act together. He has got to get these players together now, bang their fucking heads together, and let's go again. Because this right now, how we perform, is unacceptable right now. It's fucking un unacceptable. Get a bloody grip and let's go again. Because I'm sick and tired of seeing this shit week in, week out. We cannot perform at that potential best. I can't even get my words out because I cannot describe this performance. We were absolutely shocking. Now, the second thing I want to get onto now is the board. Now, the board are not helping Ole Gunnar Solskjaer right now because he's only had one good transfer window, and that was last summer. We should be signing players th this window right now in January. We're still trying to fucking negotiate a price for Bruno Fernandes and we've not even bought him yet. We're on the 25th of January, we've only got 31 days in January, we've got six more days to wrap this whole deal up, just to get one player in. It's a joke, it's a joke, just to get one player in. I remember in the summer it took us like six, seven weeks to get bloody Harry Maguire. That's how long it took to get bloody Harry Maguire. Not good enough, this boy is too slow. They cannot negotiate, we've got the worst negotiators going, we cannot bring a player in within the first couple of days, it's got to take this team. Say to them, we're going to put this price in, take it or leave it, you accept it or you reject it, and then you improve it in the bid, right? Never mind about what, how much they want. Get the price in of what you want for a player, and let's go and buy this player. Now, the other thing is I want to get onto now is the recruitment. Now, the recruitment is a joke. Obviously, you have to give Oli time. I know he's trying to build something right now, but it's not good enough when it's so slow to bring these players in. It's not only just bringing players in. His coaching staff are a joke. They're an absolute joke. McKenna, Carrick, Dempsey. What are these guys doing? Are they scratching their asses in training? Honest to God, he needs to get rid of all of his coaching staff. Absolutely everyone. Get rid of Carrick. Get rid of McKenna. Get rid of Dempsey. Get rid of Richard Hartis. They all don't know what they're doing at the minute. They all do not know what they're doing at the minute. They can't even coach these goalkeepers properly. I don't give a shit if Jay Rodriguez scored a great goal. Never mind. Never mind that. Scrap that. The performance was shocking, right? Never mind about that. All the coaching staff, the wrong. Get them out. Get them in the bin. They're bloody rubbish. I tell you what, his coaching staff are a fucking joke at the minute. And they need to take a long hard look at themselves right now. McKenna, Carrick, Dempsey. Absolutely all of them need to get a good look at themselves. All they just do is, is all this dancing and bloody warm-up stuff that you do when you're trying to get this team going. You're not bloody doing anything. You're not bloody helping this team at the minute. The coaching staff are a joke at the minute. An absolute bloody joke. Not good enough. I'm not happy as well because that was their first Kim win in 58 years. That was their first win since 1962. Not fucking good enough. It's unacceptable right now with this team. We are going backwards, we're not going forwards, and there's so much pressure mounting on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and it's not good enough. It's not fucking good enough. Arsenal are now four points behind us. They're doing little tiptoes at the minute as well. They've gone and drawn three games. Three fucking games. Palace, Sheffield, Chelsea. They're making little footsteps, and they're four points behind us. That's worth a win and a draw. It's not good enough. We should have closed the gap to Chelsea. We should be three points behind Chelsea, but we're not. We're six points or five points behind them now. Not fucking good enough for this team. This team's a joke. We need to get our act together now. Absolutely joke. What did I make of the performance? Shit, awful, dreadful, disappointing, pathetic, embarrassing performance. Performance, shocking. Absolutely shocking. Absolutely shocking performance. I mean, where was the urgency in that team? They were not bothered. It was like a training session. They were so slow. Players weren't bothered. There was no fight. There was just no passion. There was just no pride. Not fighting for, for each other. Fucking everything. We were just all over the place. Fucking too slow on the counter attack. There was no intensity, no tempo. We're just not doing anything right. And we just let fucking Burnley bully us. Burnley a fucking joke at the minute. Can't even get going under Sean Dyche. I don't give a shit if they're beating Leicester. We should be winning this game against Burnley. These are teams that we should be beating against Burnley. It's not acceptable. This team is a joke at the minute. We are a joke at the minute. We are a fucking joke. It doesn't help that we've got idiots upstairs that don't know what they're doing. Fucking Glazers. Fucking Woodwards. Get rid of them. 
get in the bin, get them out. They don't know what they're doing themselves, but first half was a joke, an absolute joke. Fucking hell, we're not good enough right now. I tell you, first half, dreadful. No fight, no passion, no pride, no urgency. We do not know what the F we are doing at the minute. Why do we play so poor? Defence midfield and the attack, we lack leaders. Again, Harry Maguire, you're the captain out there. You've got to be angry at these players. And so does Solskjaer. You and Solskjaer, you've got to be angry with these players. I do not care if these players are young. I do not care. You need to swear at these players because if you don't swear at these players, you're not going to get anything out of them. I don't care if Greenwood's 17, 18. At the end of the day, these players, you need to keep them up their arses. And that's the way how you get them going. You have to swear at these players. Because if you don't swear at these players, you're not going to get anything out of them. Harry Maguire, you should be doing something about this as well, mate. It's not good enough. We lack creativity. We lack quality. We lack urgency. No fight, no passion. No hunger, no character, no desire. We lack fucking everything. Not good enough. What is going wrong at this football club right now? Absolutely everything's going wrong at this club right now. Starting with the owners. The owners are now starting to turn into Ed Woodward now. I mean, even fans are chanting to the owners, the Ed Woodward as well. There's a virus in this club. We need major surgery with this team. We cannot bring one player in. It's taken us nearly a whole month just to get this player in, Bruno Fernandes. There's so much going wrong at this club right now. From top to bottom, there's a virus at this club and we need to start it out right now. But starting off by getting rid of the owners and getting rid of Ed Woodward as well. But it's not only just that though. You've got to look at the manager as well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He's got to take a lot of blame for this game. The players as well, they're to blame as well. His coaching staff, they need to get the blame as well. It's just not good enough. When are we going to learn from our mistakes? We're never going to learn from our mistakes. I'm seeing now that on bloody TV, now that they have this iPad, I know Carrick's probably trying to do his best right now, showing players what to do. I mean, we're never going to learn from our mistakes at the end of the day. It's the same shit week in, week out. We cannot keep up this consistency week in, week out. One week, we're winning a game. The next week, we're losing a game. The week after that, we're drawing. The week after that, we're losing. And then the week after that, we're winning. We're so inconsistent. We need to get a bloody grip. How do we turn this around? I don't know how we turn things around because at the end of the day, we need major surgery in this team. How do we get going forward? I don't know. These players need to take a long hard look of themselves those players should be hurt after that uh, the fans are really hurt from that as united fans for since people have been born we've been following this football club it's just not good enough and i mean yes it might be our worst start in 30 years but fucking hell i mean we've got to turn things around pretty quick footballing wise we've got to turn things around pretty quick but i mean to bring players in and to bin off the dead word and bin off the coaching staff and bin off the owners and Woodward, it's going to take bloody years, I tell you. And I don't care if it took Klopp like three, four years, I mean, Jesus Christ. He said to the board, I want this player, they got him that player and they brought them in with it, bloody few weeks or something, one or two weeks or something. It takes this bloody club about nearly a month to sign one player. That's how bad we are. Footballing-wise, we need to turn things pretty round quick. We've got to beat Tranmere Rovers in the FA Cup. Kick on a bit of momentum, get a bit of confidence going again, get the mood back up in the dressing room. We've got to press the reset button and go again. This club from top to bottom, to turn things round is going to take years, I'll tell you that for a fact. Who stood out in the game? I mean, it's hard enough to find who stood out in this game because not many players stood out in this game. I think the only two that stood out for me was wan and Fred. And I think they were the only two that had a go and tried the best and did everything that they could, really. And I thought the others were absolute trash. How do we beat Wolves? I'll tell you what, this is probably the best opportunity and the best time to play Wolves right now. Wolves are not in their greatest form at the minute. Wolves, fantastic team, got a lot of quality. They've got fantastic players. Nuno's tactics do pay off week in and week out, but last couple of weeks they've not been doing so great. They might have been Southampton, but obviously got beat by the world champions Liverpool a few days ago. It's not really helping Wolves as well because I'd say this is two informed teams at the minute that are sat fifth and seventh. I'll tell you right now, United don't deserve top four right now. We do not deserve it. The only way we're going to beat Wolves, I'll tell you, all he's got to put out a right team selection. He's got to make sure he gets the best of out of all the players. We're going to have to have a quick start, bright start to the game. We need the movement there. We need quick, incisive football. 
we've got to play with a aggression and we've got to play with energy we need high tempo high intensity we've got to play how we play from minute one to minute 90 we're gonna to have to keep our foot on the pedal we're gonna to have to create chances score our chances i mean wolves are going to be making a few changes in personnel and that's going to be the likes of the goalkeeper change obviously they had john ruddy in a couple of weeks ago they're obviously going to bring in Rui patricio for this one there's going to be a few changes in personnel He's going to pretty much go with the same lineup that he had against us in the FA Cup. But the only way we're going to have to beat Wolves is, I mean, in that one in the FA Cup, it wasn't the best performance against Wolves. The only way we're going to beat Wolves now is just, we're going to have to come out quick. We're going to have to be disciplined at all times. We're going to have to be calm, composed on the ball. Don't rush things. I mean, in the final third, we've been dreadful right now. We've not been creating enough chances. We've not been, uh, we take one too many touches when it's not necessary. The only way we're going to break down Wolves is by having a quick start and then, I mean, we're going to have to start create chances against Wolves and we're going to have to take them and we're going to have to score on them. That's the only way you beat Wolves, but I mean, Wolves are well structured. They play with a front three with Traore, Jimenez and sometimes Neto or, or it could be Jota. We'll have to see who's fit for this game against Wolves. But Wolves, fantastic team. They'll come with a game plan. They'll come with the tactics. They'll come to Old Trafford with nothing to lose. Uh, this is two teams that have got to win. Uh, this is two teams, like I said, that are out of form. And whoever turns up, which players do turn up, and I mean, this is more important for, for us more than them, to be fair, because this is at home for us and we can't lose to Wolves. So this is a game, it's a must win for us. We're going to have to bounce back. We're going to have to get back to winning ways. And we're going to have to kick on and press the reset button, go again now. We're going to have to really pick things up now because things are just not going our way right now. The only way we're going to have to beat Wolves is by creating our chances. I mean, Ollie's going to have to pick the right team selection. If he's going to start players for the sake of it, then we're going to lose. So he's going to have to go with the players that are good enough to beat Wolves. And he's going to have to go with the players that are good enough to break down Wolves. Ollie, he's under pressure and he knows that he's got to win this game, really. We're going to have to beat Wolves again. It's going to be tough against Wolves, but I'll tell you what, whoever turns up is going to win this game. And I don't want to draw this game because I think if we draw this game, I think there's going to be more questions to be asked. If we draw or lose this game, I think people are just going to start turning to Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer now thinking that the fans are going to be fearing for the worst now. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Wolves is going to be tough, but we're going to have to come up with some very good tactics and we're going to have to come in with a game plan. Going to be mentally, physically ready and we're going to go in with the right mindset and the right mentality in this game. We're going to have to go there to win. We have to win this game at the end of the day. Wolves have got nothing to lose. They've got a lot of quality. I think this is the best opportunity to beat Wolves now in the Premier League because they're not in the greatest form. And if we can't beat Wolves, then I don't know. We know it's going to be tough at the end of the day. Getting into the stats now. So possession-wise for Manchester United, it was 72.2%. For Burnley, it was 27.8%. Goals for Man United, it was 0. And for Burnley, it was 2. Total shots for Man United, it was 24. And for Burnley, it was 5. Shots on target for Man United, it was 7. Poor. For Burnley, it was 2. Shot accuracy for Man United, it was 29.2%. And for Burnley, it was bang on 40%. Shots inside the box for Man United, it was 11. And for Burnley, it was 4. Shots outside the box for Man United, it was 13. And for Burnley, it was 1. Total passes for Man United, it was 692 passes. And for Burnley, it was 261 passes. Pass accuracy for Man United, it was 85.5%. And for Burnley, it was bang on 59%. Going into the substitutions now, Pereira went off for green. We'll talk about Pereira's performance. Started as the playmaker and was brighter in possession, but was moved to the left wing before half-time and then substituted at the interval. Williams went off for sure. Talking about Brandon's performance. Game enough from the start, but was unable to distinguish himself in attack and was brought off with United 2-0 down. James went off with Lingard. Talk about Dan's performance. Lucky to start and maybe did so out of necessity. No visible signs of improvement and again looked like a championship winger. Onwards and upwards, Wolves next. Now Wolves are seventh from the table. Now like I just said then, Wolves are a team that are struggling at the minute. I think this is the greatest opportunity for Manchester United now to finally get them back in the Premier League. I think the last few years now at Old Trafford I think we've drawn. We haven't lost a game at Old Trafford in quite a long time. I think this is the best opportunity now to beat Wolves in the Premier League at home. Wolves, they're not in the greatest form themselves, you know, at the minute. I think that's obviously down to the 
Nuno's tactics and his ta tactics have just not been paying off recently. I think for Manchester United, I mean, in this game, it doesn't really help that the fans are playing this walkout in the 58th minute. That doesn't really help because I tell you what, if those fans decide to do that, I know they're trying to get the message across to Woodward and the Glazers, but showing the club up by doing that, you're showing the club up, you're embarrassing our club by doing this walkout, and you've got to get behind the team. You have got to get behind our team, and you've got to get behind them through the thick and thin. If you want our club to get back going forwards again, you have to be in that stadium to get behind this team. And doing that mass walkout, or whatever this is, some planned walkout, it's not good enough. I know you're trying to get your message across to Woodward and the Glazers, but you've got to get behind the team through the thick and thin as well. I tell you what, if those fans do that, I'm going to be embarrassed as a United fan. These fans are now need to get a bloody grip. If they want to be United fans, stay in that ground and support the team. But if you're not United fans, fuck off and do one. If you're w walking out of that stadium, you can do one, you can fuck off and you're not true United fans. I tell you that for a fact. So I'm pissed off with this bloody planning of this walkout in the 58th minute just because it was Burnley's first win in 58 years. It's not good enough. If these fans are going to start doing this to ruin our club, I know they're not seeing their best team perform recently. But if you want to get behind our team, you've got to get behind our team through the thick and thin. It doesn't help if that's going to happen as well in the Wolves game. This is a game that United need to win. Do our fans realise that? Because they don't. They just want the Glazers and Woodward out. Never mind about that. This is a game that Manchester United need to win. And these fans are all bothered about doing this bloody planned walkout thing in the 58th minute. It's not good enough from these fans. Because these fans are just not helping our football club right now. They're not helping our football club at the minute. So it's not good enough from these fans if they're going to be planning that in the 58th minute. At the end of the day, this is probably the best opportunity to beat Wolves now in the Premier League, to be fair. They're not in the greatest form themselves. We've just played Wolves in the FA Cup about two weeks ago. Wolves have been scoring at least one and a half goals and conceding 1.3 goals at the moment. So far this season, not doing too bad right now. Wolves have scored 35 goals and conceded 32 goals so far this season. Wolves have ranked ninth for conceding the most goals so far this season. Like I said, Wolves have not been at their potential best recently, but they'll love an away day at Old Trafford. When I was here in 2018 in Malaysia, we drew that game 1-1. We need to try and pay them back, and we need to try and get something back on Wolves now. I know we beat them in the FA Cup, and that's the thing. I think Wolves will try to return the favour, come back to Old Trafford and try and get one back on us after getting beat in the FA Cup. But at the end of the day, I mean, that wasn't Wolves' day, you know, VAR went against them and they conceded a goal through fatigue and fitness. I think Wolves weren't at their potential best against us in the FA Cup. Wolves will come with the game plan, they'll come with the tactics, they'll want to try and get us back. Like I said, the way we're going to have to beat them is have a quick and bright start. The movement's got to be there, we've got to be quick and sharp on the ball, we've got to pass the ball, it's got to be quick. We need urgency in the team, we need fight, passion, pride. We need to see character. The players have got to go out there and have the desire to win that game. We've got to go out there. We have to win this game. If we want to get back on track, we have to win this game at the end of the day. And that's the way we're going to have to beat them. We're going to have to create our chances, scoring our chances. We can't be complacent if we hesitate. And if we're in these situations where we can't break them down, that's the way how they're going to beat us. Wolves are very good at capitalising on mistakes and we can't afford to make too many mistakes because if we make too many mistakes they'll capitalise and then they'll score on it and that's what happened in the FA Cup but we got lucky that that got overturned by the VAR. We can't be just turning to VAR all the time, we've got to play our potential best, we've got to stay on our job, we've got to be concentrated and focused at all times. When they're on the attack we've got to defend properly, we've got to get men behind the ball, we're going to have to keep our shape. We're going to have to be organised at all times. We're going to have to be switched on from minute one to minute 90. We're going to have to go there, come with a game plan, come with the tactics. Ollie's going to have to pick the right team, put the players in the right positions. He's going to have to balance the team out right. We need The structure of the team needs to be right. We need depth in the team and it needs to select the right formation for the game. It's vital to win this game at the end of the day. Wolves have won eight, drawn ten and lost six games so far. Wolves' last three games are they've drawn to Newcastle 1-1. They just beat Southampton 3-2. That was a very good result for Wolves. And they just lost to Liverpool the other day 2-1. They'll look to react themselves against us at Old Trafford as well. So that meant that they've drawn one, won one and lost one. We're very balanced right now. At least they're a little bit more consistent than us. We're just not 
that consistent this season. Big game against Wolves. It's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. We're going to have to play at our potential best if we want to beat Wolves. The last time United beat Wolves at Old Trafford was on Saturday the 10th of December 2011 and it ended 4-1 to the Reds. Can United beat Wolves nine years later in the Premier League? The last time Wolves beat Man United at Old Trafford was on Saturday the 9th of February 1980 and it ended 1-0 to Wolves. Can it come back and haunt United less than 40 years later? Hope not. The players to look out for is Doherty, Cody, Jordao, Neves, Montinho, Dendonka, Neto, Jimenez, Jota, Traore. Hope you guys have enjoyed another video. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to my channel if you are new. See you guys in a video in the next couple of days. And peace.